So you have two rows now, but now it's waiting for the number of columns. How many columns do you have? Three. Three. There's your template. And now what you're going to do is you're going to transfer the important information over here into here. But what's important over here is not the variables, it's the coefficients and the constants. Row one, column one, currently holds a value of zero, and that's where you are right now. So row one, column one, column one is supposed to hold a value of two, enter. And it automatically goes horizontally. You can use your arrow keys to make it go vertically if you want, but it's easier to put it in horizontally because you're putting it all in one equation at one time. But your arrow keys can still navigate around if you make a mistake and you can change something. Okay, so second coefficient. Understood to be one. Every cell has to have a number in it. Sometimes that number could be zero, but we know that if we see y, that there was at least a coefficient of one on that. Third row, or third column, that's the constant value now, which should be eight. eight. And when you enter that, notice how it nicely carries your turns you down to the next line. See how the input is very easy for you to be able to go through? Okay, same thing is gonna work on the calculator side of things, okay? So second row, coefficient on x? Four. Coefficient on y? Negative one. Negative one. Now be careful, because this isn't negative, this is subtraction. This is negative. If you put a subtraction symbol there accidentally, and then you put the one, the calculator will have a hissy fit. And you could say, screw that, I'm just not gonna use this ever again, that's what quit means. Or you can do go to, and it'll take you back to where you made your mistake. So now that should have been a minus, a negative symbol in there, and it accepts that. And now the value four is the constant value. Okay, so first step is getting the information into the calculator. Okay, editing phase of the calculator. Now here's where the calculator becomes finicky. The operation we have to run is in the matrix menu as well. But the way the calculator is programmed, you have to go back to the home screen. Because if you go back to the matrix menu, it thinks even though you're not in the editing column, it thinks you want to continue editing something. So we're going to have to quit to get back to our home screen. Something we didn't have to do in the stats menu, but we have to do here. Second and mode, quit takes you back to the home screen. Second mode, quits, takes you back to the home screen. So all of that was what we did right here. Accessing the matrix menu, getting out of the matrix menu, how to change entries into the matrix menu, and now we're targeting what's going to go on down here. Okay? So you had to enter, enter you had to exit the matrix menu, and from your home screen now, you want to go right back in to that matrix menu. Second, and next to negative one again. Now notice the change in the screen. How's your screen different than when it was you, when you went to the first time? It shows you you have, you have something in matrix A. And it may be something, in fact, it's something you want right now, isn't it? So we know what's in matrix A, but when we come back to that eight hours from now, we may not know what's there, and there's no need for us to leave it in an attack we're just gonna keep recycling this as we go through all the problems. But now we go into the second row. There is a function that we are gonna be looking for that is abbreviated reduced row echelon form. That is the abbreviation for reduced row echelon form. That's what its technical name is. As far as you're concerned, Think of it this way. That's the program that's going to solve this matrix. It's going to solve this system for me so that I don't have to do it by hand. It's the built-in program like one variable stats was that did all the analysis stuff on your problem. Okay, so we go to the math column because that's where all the operations are. And we start scrolling until we find the REF function. And be careful because there's an REF function. And that don't do what you want it to do. It's reduced row echelon form. You select that command. 
pulls it into the home screen. Now you have to tell it, that's the command, but you have to tell it where to go get the information it's supposed to operate on. So you have to go back into the matrix menu again, and now finally the name column to call up matrix A. So we use this matrix actually not right to left in terms of the columns, but left to right. Not left to right, but right to left, okay? So we use it backwards from the way it would normally appear. Now, theoretically, we should put a closed grouping symbol there, but if we don't put a closed grouping symbol there, it doesn't make a difference. And we enter. This is the reduced row echelon format for that system that we just saw. And what it means is that when we get to the end of this problem, we're seeing something now that looks like this. One, zero, two, zero, one, four. That essentially says one X and no Y's is two. In other words, X is equal to two. And no X's and one Y is equal to four. Or in other words, Y is equal to four. It solved the system for us. Why it's called the reduced row echelon form? It's reducing the unknown quantities. It reduced the number of unknown quantities in the top equation to only the x variable and told you that that x variable represented a value of two. And it reduced in the bottom row as well. So that's the built-in program that we're gonna be using over and over and over and over again to solve systems. And it takes about 20 seconds to transfer a system into a matrix to be able to use this. Whereas it may take you 20 minutes to work some of the problems by hand. Time saving device, but we have to use it smart in the problem. Okay, so if you're looking for those instructions, there's a, there's a full picture.